Hello, welcome back. My name is Celia. So about two weeks ago when we walked you through the art in our apartment, where we gave some tips on how you could come up with some fun and interesting art for your home, we'll be sure to link that video, I talked about restyling this shelf. Now, when we first moved in, I quickly realized that I had a lot of books, Sean had a lot of books, and that meant that together we had a lot of books. And I kind of just threw them on this shelf. And then as the plant collection grew, I just kind of threw plants on the shelf. Um, so I want to talk today about different ways to style a bookshelf. When you go on Etsy and start looking at how to style a shelf, you'll get these beautiful images of these grand built-in spaces, which for a lot of us who rent isn't really the case. We're much more likely to have some skinny random shelf, an etage like this, which just means a bit more of an open piece that we bought, just that we need to put some stuff on. And it can be difficult to make that look cute. So we have a lot of books, we have a lot of plants. That is not the case for all of you. So I'm kind of gonna give you different ways with different levels of stuff on how you can make your bookshelf at your home all the nicer. So before we get started into changing anything, let me just walk you through quickly how our bookshelf is living now. On the top shelf, I have the ZZ plant some random decor, this Monstera, this beautiful mask that I recently got in Cape Town and I'm hiding a bunch of books back there. On this shelf, I've got plants, I'm hiding more books back there, I've got some of the art that you would have seen um, in the video, like the portrait of Sean and the portrait of myself. On this next shelf, more plants, more books, so many books. And then on this shelf, this is the most random shelf of all right now. This is kind of where I have a bunch of different decor pieces and framed art living. And then on this bottom shelf, we have this printer that we, if I'm honest, never use. Paper, like regular printer paper and nice um, resume paper. Our wands, hey, from when we went to <laughs> Harry Potter world along with Harry Potter postcards. All of my hardback Harry Potter books that I love a lot. <laughs> Ideally, I would cover most of the stuff on the bottom in baskets. Now, I don't have any baskets really on hand that I can do much with for those items, but that would be my first top tip, is to use large baskets on the bottom to kind of corral that large stuff that doesn't really have a home. I am going to use things that I have in the house only. I don't have any baskets, so we're gonna just ignore that shelf a little bit because that's what I would do there and focus on these other shelves. All right, our first option is, if we're honest, they're all a bit of a wing, but this one, I think I have seen a lot of pictures where the books are kind of arranged in these like, colors or rainbows or like grouped together so i think that's what i'm going to try and focus on for this first one All right, so we have all of the books off the shelf in a very aggressive pile over here on the floor. <laughs> I said we had a lot of books, and if you have watched our videos, then you know we have books in multiple places around the apartment, propping up baskets and plants and lamps, and still we have all of these books. I do have one change that I wanna make to the bottom initially that I have on hand ish so let's do that so this is a I think it's pronounced Kugis Ikea storage box they come in a couple of different colors and in a couple of different sizes and this is a great way to hide away your printer paper boom boom this Beyonce. We love you babes. This is great, but it's big. Never not a siren. 
but it's big. We're gonna find a new home for that. And that way it can live back on top of here and it just looks a little bit neater. I also think that we should find a new home for our wands um, and then let the Harry Potter books live. Ah, let's take them off. We'll take them off and see if we can better dress this situation. So the first one is done. And this is a super pared down version uh, of what I had, but I figure not everybody has as much stuff as I do. Some people, it's often commented in my videos that everything looks too cluttered. So this is me pulling back. Uh, I went with a Roy G. Biv, if you know colors, then that's like the quick way to remember how the colors relate to each other but red green blue uh, and I just grouped the books according to color and a little less about topic not that they were really topic pur purpose anyway and I took the green shelf as a real place to like let some plants shine um, and then kind of kept it minimal with the plants because again not everybody has a house full of house plants so this really wouldn't work for us because there is a whole pile of books on the floor <laughs> that are not addressed on this shelf at all but a few points of styling a shelf that i want to talk about while we have this kind of pared down shelf to make it more clear first off is threes things work better in groups of three so on this shelf i have the plant in this stack of books acting as one this other plant as two this as a third you take it away and it still looks nice it looks fine uh, but when you add that third element in there it just does it more justice same on this shelf this is a shelf of not threes but still even i'm sorry but still odd numbers this book is acting as one these books are acting as one thing and then each of these things are acting as another take this away and now again you don't like it as much what this was providing was in addition to that odd number is height which is another important element when styling a shelf you want to have things at varying heights. It just makes everything make more sense together. A third thing to pay attention to when styling a shelf is your placement of the books and how they relate to each other. So on this top shelf, I have the books standing. So on the next shelf, I probably wouldn't want to put standing books right beneath it. The, on this shelf, I would want the books to lay flat and I probably want them not directly underneath each other. Although I did do it here, but it's okay because now the books are standing again. So when you create that, um, you create a flow, like pay attention to how you're placing your books. And then again, on this shelf, I had a lot of books. Down here, I kind of went with black and white because we kind of did our colors above. But on this shelf, again, I have these standing up, so I put these laying on their side. And to make it work with each other, I'm going to do 
a stack horizontally and a stack vertically. This is another example of the groups of three. So even though this um, skull is resting on top of the books, this acts as one thing, this reads as another thing, and then just adding the picture in there, because right now they look like two, but adding the picture in there and making it three just makes it work better. Same principle up top, one item, two items, three items. So those three things will really help you when you dive into wanting to style your own bookshelf or any flat surface for that matter. Just remember groups of three or if you have to do more than three odd numbers and don't forget to play with height. So on option two, let's get a little more full. My personal style is a shelf that has lots of personality, not lots of knickknacks and lots of stuff. So I'm gonna layer this up a little bit more and maybe not focus as much on the color separation, but just, you know, somewhere in between my version of minimalism and my true version of maximalism. So we're gonna meet somewhere in the middle. A little jungleicious. <laughs> I put lots of greenery up top. That is where um, a lot of sun is going to bounce off of the white ceiling and give these plants lots of light so they could live up there. I even added a really tall vase just to help give some mm, weight to the leaves because the leaves are tall but they're leaves. They are by nature leafy. So adding the vase up there just helps to add a little visual weight to the height that we added up there. Now on this shelf, I want to tell you, I know I just talked about rules of threes in the last uh, version of this shelf. And this one, I have taken this shelf and kind of visually split it in half. So although you could read this as one thing and then each of these as three, you know, on their own three, you would kind of have four. Because I have pushed this to the side and kind of grouped these together, it kind of visually splits the shelf in half. This doesn't necessarily read as three things, although there are three things here. It just reads as one 
large thing and then over here is where we still have our rule of three on this shelf i chose to highlight my collection of harry potter books and taking a shelf and dedicating it to a collection of books um a collection of anything really a collection of plants if you wanted to cover the entire shelf in just plants it's okay to take one shelf and dedicate it to one thing and then on this bottom not the bottom shelf but on these lower two shelves a lot of people i know this is definitely ringing true for us we end up with a lot of smaller novels a lot of paperbacks or just smaller books that can be difficult to do a nice stack and put something on top of so here i've just stacked them all in threes and they look nice and neat uh, I didn't pay any attention to any color, but it does make them feel purposeful and allows a lot of small books to be displayed at one time. Same for down here. I just kept my black stack together just to ground what was happening at the bottom and added just a little bit of decor there. So that is shelf number two. Just a little bit more stuff <laughs> than the first one because that's what I like. And like I said, I took it really jungleicious. One more time. Okay, for option three, Sean is like, sis, it's a lot of stuff that was up here that is not up here right now <laughs> that we need to get back up there, especially like our African mask needs to come back so for option three it is going to be probably what will work best for us it's going to be the most full uh, it might completely ignore some of our rules of three because we have a lot of stuff uh, that's gonna live on here so let's jump in option three
Okay, and here is our final bookshelf. Um, I started this project really wanting to uh, share some ways that you guys could do stuff, but actually number two, I really liked. And so I just added to it with the extra stuff that I had to make it a bookshelf that both Sean and I really like too. He also really likes this one. Um, so let me walk you through the changes we made from um, the first bookshelf, like the version we were living with, to where we have landed now. The upper shelf has remained pretty much the same. I just kind of switched where the mask and the plant were living. Like if you remember, the plant was over here and I added the books that I put there for number two. I just put the mask on top. I like the height that the books give him. It just makes the mask look that much more stately and interesting. Um, I also moved this plant was uh, on this shelf. I moved him up because I like the, the, you know, I like this. I like this um, and I kind of like that he, the mask kind of is like in in the leaves. I don't know, I like that. But the rest of the, of the elements there are pretty much the same. On this second shelf, because we have so many <laughs> small paperback books, I had them kind of stacked up and hidden behind uh, decor on the first version of our shelf and I like this a lot more. This shelf, I think some people will say feels a little crowded and in a way I agree if I had to make one change I would probably get rid of the books back here and put a little space in there some negative space but we have the books and they need to go somewhere so I'm not totally offended by it this frame had been empty for the longest so I just added this little Polaroid of myself because the picture of Sean is so fun uh, and happy and colorful so there we are together now we come down, this is definitely a more paired back shelf for me. Um, the plants really need to live here because we are running out of space. So I like that they both have um, room. Harry Potter has a place of honor <laughs> on the shelf and not just stuck down at the bottom. And we were even able to throw our artwork back in. Now on this shelf down here, Sean and I both really liked how the three stacks of books looked because like i said we have so many uh, smaller paperback kind of novel sized books this works really really well and feels a lot more purposeful than the books kind of stacked up with the decor hiding in front of them i did still add these two this little vignette of three here again some people might think that this feels a little crowded but it's my house <laughs> i like it i wanted these two pictures specifically well i wanted all four of these pictures back on the bookshelf and this is where it works best oh here's a little price tag still on his booty uh and i added the little giraffe from cape town as you know just to satisfy that rule of three and a little bit of whimsy i like a little bit of a little bit of fun and then on this bottom shelf, this is where the most improved <laughs> moment is for sure. That stack of black books, I really like. I like the use of the skull there that brings the decor down here and not so um, utilitarian. And this little box was the perfect solve, which I knew already for the paper that we need to have there. So I think that that is it. Down in the comments, please let me know which version of this shelf did you guys like the most. And if you have a good shelfie or do something inspired by what you saw in this video, please tag me on Instagram. I keep telling, to, telling you guys to be my friend on Instagram, okay? I'm always in my DMs. So send me pictures and tag me in your posts. I wanna thank you as always so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.